All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Five Ways Digital Document Delivery Transforms Business Operations. My name is Jared Bruley, and I am the Director of Channel Marketing here at iPipeline, and I'm going to serve as your webinar host today. At iPipeline, we're focused on helping you secure more financial futures through our innovative and comprehensive suite of end-to-end -end digital solutions, and we're really glad you could join us today. In today's session, we're going to dive into the value of investing in an e-delivery solution to help boost efficiency, reduce costs, and ultimately transform your business operations to elevate the customer experience. Now, in an effort to minimize distractions and background noise, we have muted all participants and disabled your camera functions. Also, this webinar is being recorded and each of you will receive an email with instructions on how to view and access the recording over the next few days. We're also gonna post this recording on ipipeline.com. Now, some of you hopefully will have a lot of questions during today's session, and if you do, we invite you to use the chat feature and send your question to the host and panelists. We are gonna have some time at the end of the session to answer any questions that come in during the presentation. Now, I'd like to take a minute to introduce our speakers uh, for our session today. First up is Dennis Latour. He is a seasoned professional with over 26 years of experience at iPipeline. And throughout his career, he's held a variety of roles and now serves as our product manager for e-delivery and un underwriting. Uh, Dennis is based in Draper, Utah, which is a suburb just south of Salt Lake City. And he enjoys spending his summers exploring uh, Utah's scenic lakes, camping and paddleboarding in the mountains. Also a fun fact with Dennis is he also likes to tell really bad dad jokes. So uh, if you want to want a joke, reach out to Dennis. We're also really excited to have Liz Metcalf, who's the Vice President Case Relationship Management with Corbridge Financial uh, joining us. Liz received her uh, BA from the University of Washington and has worked in the financial services industry for 14 years with the last 10 years at Corbridge Financial. Liz is responsible for new business agency advocacy and partnership development and lives and works in Houston. Uh, Liz, we are so happy to have you join us today and look forward to hearing your perspectives on e-delivery. So with that, Dennis, I'm going to toss it over to you to uh, get this session officially started. All right. Thanks, Jared. Um, just really quick, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, iPipeline. Um, so iPipeline was founded in uh, 1995. Uh, we're currently have over 925 uh, em employees and we're growing uh, pretty uh, significantly. Uh, our headquarters is based out of Exton, Pennsylvania. However, we do uh, have offices uh, throughout the United States and Canada and uh, also in the United Kingdom. We work with over 100 uh, carriers uh, today and uh, we have about 2,500 plus broker dealers, BGAs, uh, financial institutions that we work with as well. And we have over 500,000 uh, agents and licensed advisors using our platforms today. Uh, from an iPipeline perspective, you know, we really uh, feel like the difference that we make in the market, um, you know, as market leaders uh, is, is, is significant. Um, so we have a comprehensive set of uh, uh, products on our digital platform. Uh, again, our network is is massive. We have over 100 carriers, 2,500 di distributors, and over 500,000 agents. Uh, you know, we pride ourselves in innovation. Um, so our tech uh, obviously um, is is key for that. Um, and then, you know, we also promote best practices. So we have over 29 years of experience, um, you know, contributing to the insurance industry. Uh, and we feel like we have those uh, best practices uh, down packed. So, you know, that's a little bit about iPipeline. Uh, we'll give uh, the time uh, over to Liz here real quick, uh, just to give her a chance to tell us a little bit about Corbridge before we kick in. All right. Well, Dennis, um, you know, what with uh, with uh, Liz must be having an internet connection issue um, of, of some sort. Uh, can you just go through the, the Corbridge um, overview yeah, on behalf of her? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Corbridge Financial, um, you know, at a glance, they have have over $394 billion in assets under management. Um, this is of June uh, of this year, uh, $41.9 billion in premium and deposits um, for the last 12 months, again, ending in June uh, this year, and $3.3 billion um, in adjusted pre-tax 
uh, operating income. So uh, CoreBridge obviously has uh, spun off from uh, from AIG if the, for those that don't uh, aren't aware of that either. Um, from a life perspective, um, CoreBridge works with about 34,000 independent agents uh, and more than 900 general agents um, across the life insurance um, industry. Approximately 4.1 in enforced policy. Uh, they are top six in term uh, life insurance and top 10 in, in total life insurance issued, again, all, all till June of 2024. From an annuity perspective, they're number two in total uh, annuity sales, approximately 1.2 million annuity policies in force. Uh, and then products distributed through the broad network of over 26,000 financial professionals and approximately 525 firms, including banks, broker dealers, and independent markets. Liz, are you back? There you are. I'm back. Can you hear okay. me? We yeah. can. Yes. So Liz, Dennis was just uh, on, on your behalf uh, since you dropped um, unexpectedly. He just gave the the overview slides for 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 CoreBridge. Um, I'm not. I'll toss it back to you if there's anything else you want to add or, or highlight in particular. But we're glad you're back. <laughs> yes, absolutely. No, I would just highlight. Um, we were formerly known as AIG. So AIG, we have fully transitioned and separated into CoreBridge Financial. As you can see. We sell a lot of life insurance. We sell a lot of annuities. Um, a key success factor for that is our e-delivery path. Um, and I think, Dennis, I can trust you did a great job introducing, you know, coverage financial. Yeah, <laughs> appreciate that. Okay. Well, let's get into kind of the meat of why we're here. Uh, again, we're we're trying to talk about some uh, operation efficiencies uh, with uh, electronic delivery. And, um, you know, we thank you, Liz, for participating uh in this conversation so uh let's kind of talk through uh some things here so i want to talk a little bit about um you know how your organization has shifted to e-delivery um how has it impacted your operational efficiency and there are, are there any specific examples where you've seen noticeable time or cost savings uh since making that transition absolutely so I would say, you know, especially today, more so than any time in the history of, you know, our industry, it's really table stakes to have some form of e-delivery to meet um, our agents, to meet our customers where they're at. And so we launched, we piloted in 2020, so we're going on um, almost five years now, and then we launched broadly in 21, and then we added all of our product suite in early 2022. So when we launched, and you got to put this in the context of what's going on in the world, um, you know, I would say, you know, pre-COVID, we didn't talk a lot about e-delivery. You know, we weren't being asked about it. Um, we did have a form of it, but it wasn't the preferred, you know, method. And so we saw when we launched our pilot, you know, we had our key agencies who had just been beaten down our door to get it. Um, and then we launched and out of the gate in January of 2021, 73% of our policies went e-delivery, which was just huge. And so over, you know, the course of the, of the last four years, um, we've incrementally, you know, expanded that we're close to 90% um, now, and then adding our additional product suite um, coming on with our permanent products. We've again, continued to see um, adoption and it has overall significantly increased our turnaround time um, being able to get it in the hands of the agent and the clients electronically, that they can do it um, essentially instantly. You're not reliant upon, you know, mail and that delivery. Um, so we have seen this year alone um, a two-day turnaround time, which we know as carriers, you know, shaving off hours is, is a huge feat. Shaving off days within a calendar year, and we haven't even finished the year. Um, so we're definitely seeing reduced overall turnaround time and that increased operational efficiency as we get even more of our partners on that e-delivery bandwagon. What would you say, so you said you started off uh, in 2020 around 70 uh, something percent, like where yep. do you have an idea of where you might be at now? Uh, as so far depends as on the agency. Yes, okay. as a company, we're at 86%, but I have some agencies um, that are more, kind of tech forward and have really set up their clients to expect e-delivery. They don't even talk about paper. So we had a large agency in Houston two weeks ago and they're over 90%. Okay. 
that they go e-delivery. And, and they're actually pushing us um, because we have certain limitations where, you know, if it's trust owned or if it's a juvenile policy, they're like, we want everything e-delivery. And we, when we have adoption and uses rates like that, it helps me as an operational leader to prioritize, um, you know, expansion of our e-delivery system and, and updating what we need to do internally to meet the, the needs of the customer. So for those that are kind of falling behind a little bit and they're not really adopting, like what are, what are you guys doing in order to try to get them up to speed? Uh, I'm sure there's some people that are just holding out. Um, yes. Well, and there are certain niches where, um, you know, high premium, high face amount, um, certain markets where they do want paper. And so we still want to meet them where they're at. But we as a company are definitely looking um, you know, I think everybody's under expense management and, and looking at where there's cost savings. Um, and when you see the reduction in turnaround time, it just makes sense. So a lot of that with adoption comes down to relationship management. How are we setting expectations? How are we clearly communicating what we provide, what we don't provide? Um, so we as a carrier don't currently have any exclusions, um, but we are looking at that. So if it's, you know, a million or less, do we require e-delivery? Things of that nature, which I know some of our other carrier partners have adopted. So you, you mentioned cost savings a couple times. Um, you know, outside the, the the obvious, like in the in the mail costs, where where are some other areas that you guys feel like you're um, you know shaving some dollars off uh, as far as this? Well, I would say touches. I mean, within operations, you know, every touch has a dollar amount associated with it. And so as you automate things, it's, it's, it's less human touch. Um, there's less NIGO rates when we're processing payment methods. Um, within the platform, you know, you can request reissues and changes. And so um, really those processing touches, that head count, and then of course, the mail. It's not like they uh, charge us less to mail things. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Thanks, Liz. I appreciate that, your insight on uh, on some of that. So we'll kind of move on to um, our next question here. Um, you know, since you've uh, implemented e-delivery, you know, how have you seen it affect the customer satisfaction and engagement? Uh, are there, have there been any measurable improvements in response times? Um, you'd mentioned that already before a couple of days there, feedback from policyholders, like what, um, are you getting any of that as well? Uh, what's your thoughts so on I that? Yeah, we absolutely. So we measure at an agency, you know, agent level, and then we measure at a, a policyholder level. So we have seen our NPS satisfaction scores increase. Um, again, when you have a carrier uh, or you have an agency partner come to you um, that wants that e-delivery because they work with another carrier that has it. So it's really table stakes in being able to, um, you know, improve customer satisfaction, whether that's the agent or the client. Um, what really has, to me, driven satisfaction and engagement is maturation of the platform. You know, when you roll something out, it's new. So there's training your internal teams, there's training your external teams. And so as people have adopted it and we've, we've worked on those day two items um, to continue to enhance this system, to continue to update, you know, what we work on with you all, but then what we do internally um, it's really driven adoption. And as we see that adoption, because um, there are always team members that are like, I love paper, you know, they don't submit e-applications, they don't want e-delivery. And we're like, just try it, you know? And when they try it, they're like, wow. And when they have the customers um, use it, you know, then it gets even better from there. The other thing, Dennis, here I would highlight that we did specifically as a carrier is we have a consumer portal. And so we integrated DocFast with our consumer portal. So when an e-delivery link goes out, um, they are required to register for the consumer portal prior to you know, transitioning over to DocFast. And so our consumer portal really allows that self-service option for our policyholders, you know, update a beneficiary, um, change your address, update um, your bank account. And so that has also really driven that customer satisfaction and engagement I feel like, you know, in the world, kind of what I call like the Amazon world today, um, if you can't do it online, they're like, what kind of company is this? Or, or what does this look like? So being able to, while it may initially be like, oh, it's another thing to register for, 
the downstream effect, not only for us as a carrier, but for those policyholders and ultimately the agents, it's been a really positive impact. It's just, you know, especially with in our industry, I think um, more than others, change is hard. You get people that have done this for 20, 30, 40 years um, and getting them to cross that threshold, really that relationship and that partnership, um, when they do it and they've done it a couple of times and they see positive uh, success, then we see that satisfaction and engagement come. But initially, you know, there's some transition pains. So you, you'd mentioned you do a couple surveys. Do you guys do, ever do anything like uh, uh, like seminars or anything like that where you bring in uh, your, your you know, distribution or your agents and you kind of round table, um, you know, ideas and, and kind of get feedback that way as well? Is that something uh, that you guys yeah. participate in? Yes. So we, um, of course, we participate in all of the industry conferences, but then internally, we also have um, with our sales team, with our distribution teams, we have an operations advisory council. So e-delivery is always a key function of that. Um, and not to steal, you know, our thunder, but we have some stuff that we're looking just from feedback uh, from those things that I know we kind of laid out with, with this conversation that I wanted to touch on. Um, but we have that. And then with our agents, we do bring them in to our home office in Houston, um, again, to do it in person, to do those trainings, to actually sit down with somebody um, and do test cases and help them walk through it. And then um, with policyholders, we have within our contact center, we have surveys that they can take at the end of every call. And then, of course, we have our outreach surveys to, to measure um, quality feedback to capture any of that free form, um, you know, how did we do sentiment? That sounds awesome. Uh, I would love uh, for an invite out to uh, Houston the next time you do one of those to be a fly on the wall in those rooms. So absolutely, uh, I'm just putting that out there for you. Perfect. Um, okay. So thank you uh, again for that. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on. Um, so um, the next thing we want to talk about is, can you kind of walk me through um, how you did that integration with, or how you're doing uh, integrations with uh, e-delivery to your uh, existing systems and, you know, what yeah. challenges or hurdles did you encounter during that transition? What do you mean challenges? Everything when you integrate new systems goes seamlessly. It goes, it goes well. Um, so I touched on our consumer portal, which we just saw a huge um, increase in usage when we integrated with e-delivery. So that would be probably my number one recommendation for our carrier partners is um, utilize this not only as a new business tool, but to also integrate just across operations to help your enforce team. And then of course your policyholders. I would say the largest challenge we faced um, was not integrating with iPipeline, you know, setting it up, all of that. We had a phenomenal onboarding team, but it was our internal systems. Um, so when you're a company that's been around, and I know Corbridge is newer, but AIG transitioned to Corbridge Financial that's been around for over 100 years, um, you have a lot of different systems and a lot of new systems and things you need to integrate. And so one of the things we internally um, work through and continue to work through is our batch update processes where one system has to talk to another system, has to talk to another system, you know, and then we get the magic of e-delivery. But if one of those systems doesn't integrate and communicate correctly, then we have delays. Um, we're also limited by our current batch update process. So this one updates here, then pushes it to this one. And so our focus for 2025 is very much on streamlining that system integration to get to instant issue. So we talk about um, for our underwriting path, we have an instant decision path, which we've built with the e-application. Um, so once we get that, you know, wonderful instant uh, preferred plus policy approval, how do we then get it to them to uh, get their premium and, and get that e-delivery completed so they don't have to wait, you know, four hours or a day? How could we do it when you're on the phone with the customer, when you're in person with the customer um, to help with that, uh, that placement? So if I remember correctly, you guys have um, payment collection during your uh, e-delivery uh, ceremony. Can you talk a little bit about how the payment process, so you, you're collecting it during e-delivery. When do you do with it 
you know, at that point? Like, where, where is, what's the next steps from that? Yeah. So once we issue the policy, um, if we do not already have, you know, the payment mode or uh, like a bank draft form submitted um, with the application, we send it via e-delivery. The great thing about DocFast, um, when we built the platform for the payment uh, system is for our term products, because of course, permanent products are illustrated. So there's a little bit more effort there. Um, but within e-delivery for term, you can update your mode. So if they want to change from monthly to quarterly to annual, and then they can update their um, premium method. So do they want to do bank draft? Do they want to do um, credit card? Because we accept that for the first initial premium payment. And then within there, the great thing about that, especially when it comes to bank draft, is we run, um, which I think a lot of carriers do, we run GAIAC within there. And so we're going to do a check within the system to say, you didn't give us the correct bank account information. Maybe you missed a digit or you, you know, reversed them. And so it has really helped us decrease like our NIGOs. So that not in good order, like the payment rejections, um, but they can do that all within there. And then they can, um, a lot of times uh, clients don't want to give payment information at submission. And so being able to say, um, we can do it, you know, via this secure method, we do it via e-delivery, and then you have options within there has been really great. And then of course, you know, operations, reducing those not in good orders has really helped us. Once it's completed there, it is, you know, transmitted back to us. Um, as long as they didn't add any additional information, like they just were diagnosed with cancer or had a medical appointment, um, then we're good to place the policy in force. Um, and we've automated that process. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. Um, all right. Um, we're going to move on. Um, so the next thing we want to talk about is, uh, you know, how much progress have you made in automating document related processes? Uh, what kind of impact have you had on those things like accuracy, compliance, uh, and just your overall business workflow? So I would say we are very focused on automation. So anytime we can look at a process and remove that human touch, um, because then you remove the human error. We all, you know, think a two looks like an eight. So if there's something where we can ingest it and then process anything automatically, we're very focused on that. Um, and really the ultimate goal there is reduction in overall turnaround time. So if it would take me, um, you know, 45 minutes to place a policy in force, but you can automate those steps and then work to remove the air, um, we're very focused in, in that area. Um, I would highlight here just for the, the purpose of this, you know, this chat is DocFest has really helped us with that um, for the reasons I just kind of mentioned, you know, so we have multiple workflows within DocFest. And um, so we have direct to consumer, which it would come from us just directly to the, the, the policyholder. Um, we have it where it can stop with the agency. It can stop with the agent. You know, we have multiple paths you can take. And so if the agency has set up their preferences um, and the policy, once it's issued, is going to stop with them first, they can submit change requests. And so it's great, one, that they can look at it, you know, oh, the agent said they wanted 20-year term, not 30-year. Can you please reissue it before it goes to the client? Um, or if they go, oh, great, we got that preferred plus. Now we want to do, you know, you know, X change. And so they have the ability to submit a change request. And the great thing about that is it's integrated with our internal system. So instead of having to email us or call us with a request, you submit it in DocFast and then it transmits electronically back to us and it's ingested into our processing systems. So that's been a huge win that once the agency is in DocFast, you know, if they wanna make changes, they have that change request process. The other thing which we just talked about was um, with being able to change the mode or the method of payment. That really helps just eliminate um, not only NIGOs, but the additional touches of having to reissue a policy, update it. All of those touches have a cost associated with them. So being able, one, that it's one touch with the policyholder or the agency, um, and then it's just coming back into us, it, it's a win-win. Like it's hard for me to to find the negatives um, in the features that are there. So I know you guys are doing a lot with policies. Have you given any thought to doing other type of document delivery uh, outside of policies? So things like uh, you know uh, statements, 
um, and you know annual statements, prospectuses, any, anything like that. Um, even just sending out a beneficiary form, at, you know, from a policyholder perspective. Have you guys given any thoughts to? Because again, those are all document-driven activities. What uh, you know? What's your thoughts on that? Anything that we can make um, more easily accessible, so you don't have to pick up the phone and call. Um, that you can either self-service or really from a carrier perspective that we can proactively promote. Um, yes, absolutely. It's actually funny because I'm supposed to be in another meeting right now. Um, we're looking at our, our 2025 plans for end-to-end -end processing and what you're talking about, that's exactly what we're, you know, there. So I, I have a colleague that's prepped with all my big ideas of, of things I want. Um, but Dennis, you're exactly right. If there's anywhere that we can automate those document processes, um, we're looking to do it. It just helps us as a carrier. It helps us review, uh, reduce those not in good orders, reduce those touches, reduce overall cost, and then really just improve that customer experience. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Um, so kind of moving into, uh, you know, other uh, organizations out there, you know, so, um, you know, from your organization's perspective and, and um, what, what can you do to give advice to others that are just starting to adopt e-delivery or haven't adopted uh, e-delivery, you know, what strategies um, can they use to scale their efforts uh, effectively as they try to move forward? Absolutely. Um, well, kind of like we started the conversation, I would say, do it, do it, do it. It's great. It's, it's a big endeavor, but it makes such a positive impact, not only from a carrier perspective, but from a customer perspective. And for us, it was all about organization and communication. So like I shared, we piloted it with a smaller number of agencies that had high volume. So we could kick the tires, we could see what worked, we could see what didn't work. We definitely had pilots that wanted different workflows, some that wanted direct to consumer, some that wanted it to stop with the agency. So we tested um, different payment modes, we tested uh, workflows. Um, and we did launch with term first. Term was easier for us. Uh, and then we added perm. So for our permanent products, and then of course our, our GISI is always there. Um, the other thing I would say is training guides are key. So not only what we did is we have a agency guide, we have an agent guide, and then we have a client guide. And so, um, very robust. I like to joke, you know, hey, if you have extra time and you can't sleep at night, please read our 32 page, you know, DocFast e-delivery guide because we have screenshots in there. Um, we have it integrated. We did videos within our agent portal. So, you know, somebody doesn't want to read, you know, something of, of that volume. We have videos going through the screenshots so agents can help clients, agencies can help clients. And so those training guides, and we really started internally first. I know if I can get the green light from my sales partners, I'm good because they're going to give me everything they hear from the field. Um, and so once we had our training guides in place, we had our launch plan, um, we had our pilot, then um, we really engaged our internal partners and then we went live. But I feel like internally, um, you all know your business the best. And of course, your sales partners um, are going to tell you what they're hearing from the field and of course, what other carriers are doing. But really for me, Dennis, it was all about that organization, that partnership, and then that communication. That's awesome. The advice that I would give uh, to carriers is not wait for the next global pandemic um, yeah. to get e-delivery. Try to have that in place uh, prior to that. Um, yeah. you know, obviously, we saw a lot of uh, carriers that... Um, you know, the, their agents weren't going out and, and meeting with people. They had no way or, or mechanism to be able to uh, make sure that they're, they were covered and insured. Um, you know, so I kind of joke about it, but, you know, at the same time, it was serious, right? That, uh, you know, that pandemic really played a factor. And those that had not just e-delivery, but just electronic digital processes in place uh, really didn't, um, you know, weren't very impacted very much, um, you know, from that regard. Um, so, uh, that's, that would be my advice for, for all of you carriers that are out there, um, you know, that don't have any sort of, uh, e-delivery solution, whether it be doc fast or something else, just a delivery, uh, solution, um, before that happens, um, you know, next time, hopefully it doesn't, but yeah. 
Um, so thanks for sharing that, um, Liz. Um, you know, looking ahead, um, you know, what what innovations or trends are you anticipating in e-delivery? Uh, how do you uh, think these developments will impact and shape, um, you know, insurance operations? Absolutely. So I would say for, you know, Corbridge Financial, you know, for us as a carrier, we're very focused on, um, and I'm, I'm not using the official lingo, but like one-stop shopping. That, you know, for example, if our agents and our agencies are in our agent portal, we want them to stay in the portal um, so they can submit applications there. They can look at their commission statements. Um, they can view their DocFast dashboard. You know, we have an SSO that logs into the dashboard. Um, and so that's very much for me when you look at the systems that you use, because there are phenomenal partners out there to work with it at every step of the process. And it's that integration that, so when you get them there, how do you keep them there? Nobody wants to have to go to four different systems to do something. So how do you reduce those touches? How do you have that one-stop shopping, that first call resolution, that first contact resolution? Um, and so with that, I know, you know, Dennis, we're kind of in the, the emphasis stages of with e-delivery, how can we um, take advantage as a carrier of more of what you all offer. And so we're talking about like upsell functionality within DocFest. And so again, they've, they've done the e-application. We've got that, you know, if they've chosen the client collaboration path, we've got that instant decision. You know, we're working on decreasing that time to issue. And then once we issue, they get that magical preferred plus and they're like, ooh, well, 1 million was good, but what about 2 million? What would that look like? And not only for our policyholders, but really for our agents, what can our agents and agencies do that self-service that we can proactively share with them? Because we know throughout life insurance, every touch, whether it's by an agent or a customer is an opportunity for them to say, hmm, do I really want to work with this carrier or for the policyholder to go, hmm, do I really need life insurance? And so we want to keep them engaged. We want it to be easy. And so that upsell functionality, and then of course, um, going the other way, because there are things um, health-wise that maybe you didn't get that preferred plus, so you got a standard and your budget doesn't afford for what that standard you know, premium is, but you still um, know the importance of life insurance. So having the, the downsell ability of, okay, so I quoted this, how do I move, you know, the um, scale the other way to see what fits within my budget or what the agent can propose and share with the client as, you know, option B uh, to really, they've done all the hard work. We want to help them as a carrier be able to, you know, expand coverage or get them the right amount of coverage depending upon, you know, their underwriting approval rating. Um, so I would say those two things is something that you know, we're actively talking about and looking at. I think the other thing just from a like the future is um, chat functionality. And so I know we're looking at it within our consumer portal, within our agent portal. We're also working on like text messaging. I know we're a little behind the times, but you know we have automatic emails that go out from our, all of our portals. How do we then text message? Everybody has a phone. Um, not everybody gets in their email all the time or we get so many emails. And then when they're there, um, if they have chat functionality, for quick hits, um, a lot of our agents may not work traditional business hours, you know, like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or 8 to 6 when like our contact center or our home office employees are working. And so how do we, again, meet them where they're at with that functionality? So that's kind of another area of like where we're going that we're, we're looking into. That's awesome. So I would love to talk to you a little bit more about the the chat functionality and the texting. Um, we've got some things coming down the pipe as well. Um, so I'd love to get together with you and uh, chat a little bit maybe uh, on that opportunity. Uh, but let's take a step back. And um, you had mentioned, you talked about the upsell and you, you talked to more a little bit about the downsell side of it. We call that the preservation side of things. Like what, what makes you guys uh, excited about the downselling because you're, you know, it's less premium. So right. why, why would that excite you? I don't know if everybody understands the, um, you know, why that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. So for me, it's all about that relationship. Um, so within my role within the company, um, we are agency facing. 
So I really talk about, you know, case relationship management as we are your new business and in-force advocates. And so with our agency partners, whether it's at the agency level or the agent level, you know, they're doing all that work on the front end. Um, And I think also anybody who's worked in life insurance for any amount of time knows, um, you know, it's an underwritten product. And so what does that look like within our term and our permanent space? And you don't always get those preferred pluses. I mean, everybody, if I had a, you know, dime for every time somebody said, but they look healthy. Well, great. Yes. But (laughs) I would be a millionaire if if, uh, that was true every time I heard that. Um, And so we do get those, those situations where the rating isn't that preferred plus or that best class, um, but it's still an accurate rating. And so we've given that details. We understand that. How do we preserve the policy? Because the agent, this is their business. This is their livelihood. And so we want to be that partner that, so we didn't get option A, you know, but what's option B? And for me, it's about relationships. It's about preservation. Um, I think it's, and this is my personal opinion, um, it's somewhat of a, of a little bit of an antiquated model that everyone's out there just to shop cases. You know, it's so automated these days that when you as an agent or an agency are, are telling your client, you know, Corbridge Financial has the best product or, or uh, you know, fit for you, if it comes back and we went from a preferred plus to a standard, the agent doesn't want to go back and go, oh, well, I'm sorry, I gave you, you bad advice. So it's like, how do you preserve that sale? How do you save it? Um, and then how can we proactively do that? Because you want to reduce that turnaround time. You don't want to have that agent have to like email you and wait if they can do it and have that like one stop, um, you know, self-service shopping partnership. I think it just, it just helps overall with that. From a carrier perspective, I would imagine that also keeps your placement ratios um, higher when they, when then they're able to save a case like that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and from a carrier, you know, we have expanded that money on those touches. I mean, we want to save it as much as they do. So you're right. It's definitely about that partnership. That's awesome. Okay. Well, thank you, Liz. Those are the questions that I, I had set um, uh, for you today, but we're going to open it up here in a second for um, some Q and a for you and, and, and me, if anybody wants to ask me a question, um, hopefully they, they care about you more than me. Uh, but just really quick, uh, just a quick little uh, plug for uh, iPipeline DocFast. Um, just want to uh, give you guys the opportunity uh, for those that might be interested. Uh, there is a QR code here that you can scan. Uh, I'll leave that here for a second so um, you can uh, get that. I think I have that on the next slide too uh, as well. But uh, just, you know, we've got over 30 carriers on the platform. Uh, we've got over a thousand distributors that are using our platform uh, for electronic delivery. Um, we've got over 2 million policies that have gone through the system um, and then have been placed. And then uh, uh, something that I'm really uh, excited about, and you know, and I've been toting this for uh, a couple of years, is our fastest e-delivery that we've ever done is 51 seconds. And that's from the carrier all the way down to the customer signature. Uh, unfortunately, that was not with you, uh, Liz. No, we're, we got but, that in our focus for next year. I got a goal 51. to be. <laughs> but 51 seconds is amazing uh, to be able to have that policy issued and signed and back to the carrier within that 51 seconds. So that's amazing. Okay. With that being said, I'll just open the floor up here uh, for any uh, Q and A uh, that anybody uh, may have. Uh, Jared, I don't know if you've seen. Yeah. Any yes. Yeah. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks, Liz. That was uh, that was awesome conversations. Uh, we did get a couple of questions here, and just a reminder, folks, um, if you do have a, a question, submit it in the chat, and we will we will see it. We'll try to answer as many of them as as we can. Um, the first one, uh, Liz, actually goes to you. Um, you know, you mentioned earlier that you integrate your customer portal with DocFast. Um, mm-hmm. Is this in the beginning uh, of the process or after? You know, can you elaborate more on how that integration works? Um, and are you getting higher rates of signups or are you seeing drop off from e-delivery because you're finding consumers don't want to sign up for the portal? Absolutely, thank you, Jared. So with our process, we do have it integrated um, on the front end. Um, I would say we've definitely seen an increase in consumer portal adoption and signups. I haven't seen fallout, but I have seen, um, and not currently, but you know, kind of in the rollout stages where um, there may have been a hiccup, something if you like were an existing policy older and you don't remember your login and you can't create a new one, 
how quickly can we respond to be able to reset your password, to be able to get you in for this new policy. You know, it's great to have repeat customers. So we definitely had a small number of escalations like that, but it really helped through that partnership for us to identify things that we may have missed that didn't come up or might be unique to a specific um, client. And so that was definitely something we added was, um, you know, doc fast consumer portal support. So we have a team that can get those um, escalations, you know, via email. Of course, my team has a path and then we have a team that calls out. So if somebody said, hey, I can't do this, they report it. We have a proactive team that calls them to assist. Great. Awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, Dennis, this is, a, this is a question for you. Um, now, the majority of the discussions today have been on efficiencies for carriers, but can you dive a little bit deeper or share anything that iPipeline uh, has in the works or you know, we have up our sleeves to help with operational efficiencies uh, for the independent agencies uh, with e-delivery? That's a great question. Um... Yeah, as, as a matter of fact, um, you know, today the the challenge for uh, agencies is, you know, they have uh, multiple different systems. Um, you know, they have their agency management system, and then they have DocFast for uh, for e delivery. Um, you know, they live and breathe inside of the agency management system that's open all day long on their on their um, on their screen, uh, and then they they jump into e delivery a little bit, you know, here and there as policy comes in or a notification comes in, and they go. Uh, and take you know do the review on that process. Uh, so something you know, so it's, it's a lot of time going back and forth, relogging in things like that. Uh, so one of the things that we're working on uh, actively right now uh, is to take um, the agency management system, sp specifically ours, uh, agency integrator, and open up um, some uh, conversations or APIs uh, calls in between uh, agency integrator and DocFast. So that all of the functionality that you do uh, within the DocFast system, that you'll be able to take those uh, actions within uh, uh, Agency Integrator. So um, that saves the user, the case manager user, uh, time from having to open up a new browser, go log into DocFast and look at the policies there, uh, you know, take the actions from there and then go back to the agency management system. They're in the policy uh, record or the case record inside Agency Integrator. Why not do all of those things within there? So we're actively working on that. Um, that's something that we're excited to bring to uh, the market, um, especially for our existing customers that are using Agency Integrator. Um, so, um, you know, saving them time and clicks and um, being able to uh, to do that from within that is uh, we're really excited about and, and hopefully uh, they are too. So, yeah. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Dennis. Uh, Liz, I'm going to uh, put this one over to you. Um, can you uh, share with the group again why you're excited about Upsell and uh, when it's going to be available for your distributors, or are you going to limit it to a certain subset, how that whole thing is going to work? That's a, that's a great question. Um, before I get to that one, I was going to pivot back, Dennis, and say, well, I'm excited to hear more about that from you. Um, you had a couple things you're like, oh, I want to talk more about coverage with that. So I, I'm excited because that's something we definitely hear a lot about is that integration with agency integrator and the logging in and out yeah. and podcast. So I think that's awesome. Great. So Jared, I think that, that's a, that's, it's a great question. So upsell, um, I think again, really excited about anything where once you're there, we can keep you there, um, to help with the functionality, the streamlined. Um, so timing, uh, I do believe this is being recorded, so I'm not committing to anything official, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I know we've, we've, we're very excited about it. And so we are actually right now looking internally, we have um, additional meetings I know on the calendar scheduled with you all. Uh, and it's just, it's always been a great partnership. And so um, nothing to commit to today, uh, but just the benefits of um, that we see within it with the upsell, with the preservation, it just continues to add to, you know, where Corbridge Financial is focused now and in the future. Great. Sounds good. Um, I, you know, I just want to go back to a, a little bit of, of a plug. You know, if you scan the QR code on the screen here, it's going to direct you to a, to a web page where you can fill out uh, a short form uh, to request a, a demo and to learn more about uh, DocFast. However, since, you know, we talk, also talked a little bit about Agency Integrator, um, you know, more than happy to have a conversation with anyone on that as well. Um, so you can just put that in the, in, in, in the, the, the form um, or, you know, pop on over to our Agency Integrator page on ipipeline.com and, and you can learn a little bit more about that as well. 
Um, a couple of other questions that came in is, uh, you, you know, Dennis, what type of documents can be delivered uh, by DocFast? W what's supported? Yeah, anything. I mean, you can send a birthday card if you wanted to. I mean, honestly, it can do any type of documents uh, delivery uh, process. So obviously the main, um, the, you know, the majority of the stuff that we get through the system today uh, are policies and uh, annuity contracts. Uh, but it can really do anything. Uh, you can send any type of form. You can send illustrations through to get signed, um, you know, uh, policy statements, um, you know, prospectuses. Uh, it really can support any type of document delivery um, that you want to do. So, yeah. Great. Then, uh, oh, oh, sorry. I was going to jump in there. So from a carrier perspective, um, I would say to be prepared and prioritize what you want. Because if you don't have it, I would definitely say, you know, to start working on it and looking at it. And that's what we did. We highlighted, you know, our top documents that we built. And then we kind of had our day one and then our day two, which is why we launched term first, because it didn't have the illustration factor, which for us was more complex. Um, and then we added perm. So yeah, the limitation was never on the side of I pipeline. It was more on carrier that we, because of, you know, we were transitioning from our homegrown tool to yours, which honestly was much better. And then because of the pandemic, we went from eh, lukewarm adoption to like, we need it yesterday. And so just something to think about from a carrier perspective, how you build out your forms, what that looks like, and then the partnership. Yeah, excellent. Thanks for that addition. Yep. Got it. Thank you. Um, this is a good question. Uh, and Dennis, I'm going to pivot over to you. Uh, what security measures are in place to protect privacy and make sure everything is safe and secure? Yeah, so I mean, we use authentication, obviously, to, um, you know, to really uh, keep those things specific to the user that's the, that that's pertaining to. So, um, you know, our, our carriers have their own authentication, our distribution partners have their own authentication, our agents uh, have their own authentication, and then as well, uh, as our consumers. Uh, so an in interesting fact with the consumers uh, is we actually even have stuff that um, you you can share with the consumer uh, and hide it from the agent. Uh, so you might even have some uh, more, um, you know, sensitive information, maybe, maybe you decline them uh, or something like that. And uh, you, you want to send out a declination letter. And, and with that declina declination letter, letter, you may want to send like lab results uh, or something like that, but you don't want the agent to see those lab results. So you can actually um, hide those types of things, um, you know, from um, from the agent. So it goes directly to the consumer. But you know, maybe the declination stuff still goes to the uh, to the agent for the agent to see. So uh, so we really isolate and uh, show the data to the appropriate uh, folks, and not everybody can see every document within the package. Uh, same thing when you have like a payer. Uh, a third-party payer that's part of the consumer process, um, they don't necessarily need to see the entire document package. Um, they would just see the, you know, the payment uh, pieces of it because that's what they're responsible for. Uh, they don't need to see all of the insured information and, uh, you know, those other different things. So we really try to, um, you know, block those things and, and make sure the appropriate folks um, are are looking at the data. You know, and from a technical, um, you know, perspective, you know, iPipeline has a, a, has a, a great security team uh, and we make sure that all of our, um, you know, tools and things that we build uh, all go through, uh, you know, very secure, um, you know, practices uh, from a coding perspective, but also we do, you know, security tests and things like that to make sure, you know, from a technical perspective that, um, you know, we're, we're, we're safe uh, in that regard. So, you know, security is always the, um, you know, one of the first things that we have to get through uh, the process to make sure that we're building it correctly and to make sure it's secure. Um, you know, obviously we have a lot of sensitive data, so. Got to be safe and secure. Great. Yeah. Uh, last question we have is, uh, uh, can uh, you view pending policies on the platform? Pending policies. Um, so while they're in the e-delivery process being uh, and, and pending, yes, you can view those. We have a dashboard that's available to um, our carriers, our uh, distribution partners, uh, and our agents. And so while that um, policy is going through the different steps of the phase, uh, there is a dashboard and you can open it up and you can look at the policy. You can see the documents that's within it. Uh, within it. You can see any additional information that the carrier has provided with that document delivery. Um, you can also see um, the activity history. 
so you can see when and where uh, or, or when and what time and, and who uh, has gone in and touched that from any of those different parties um, so that you can uh, track its uh, its progression. So, uh, so you can see it from that regard. Um, I'm not sure if that's if that question is can, um, meant to be more of like the pending case status feeds, uh, those two don't tie together. Um, but you know, from while the, the issue process is pending, you can see what's going on with the issue process. Great. Awesome. And then, then the other thing I know we promote a lot is as we've seen more people utilize DocFast, like other carriers, um, it's nice to promote like a one-stop shop that um, if they have the ability, like all of their, if they do doc fast with multiple carriers, it can all be on their one dashboard. So you can see, you know, all of that there. And I will tell you, I reference weekly um, that activity history. I use it all the time. They're like, oh, I didn't get, I'm like, yeah, I went to Liz Metcalf today at 2.43 AM and, you know, and then it's like, oh, they did this. And well, my client paid. No, your client actually selected, you know, this, and then they exited out and they didn't sign and- <laughs> So I love you can see the pay. You can see the whole trail. Yeah, yeah. I, got, I got all the receipts. I'm like, oh. <laughs> you got to bring those receipts. That's great. That's great. All right. Um, well, that's the questions that, that we got. You know, again, you everyone, you see the QR code on the screen here. Uh, we'd love to give a demo, dive, dive more, uh, talk one on one about your unique needs uh, and how, you know, we can we can help uh, solve and address them. So scan the QR code um, and, uh, you know, let's uh, let's have a conversation. Dennis, if you can go to the next slide here, um, we do have part two of our uh, DocFast e-delivery webinar series. Uh, this is scheduled for October 30th at one o'clock Eastern. Um, everyone that's on the line today is automatically registered for our second session. So there's no action you need to do. Um, aside, you know, invite your colleagues, uh, other other business folks, if, if they, you know, didn't sign up for, for the session. Um, we're excited to continue the conversation uh, into a, a deep dive case study where we're going to uh, talk about how e-delivery reduce cycle times, placement ratio, eliminate costs, and much more. So that's in a couple of weeks uh, from today, October 30th at one o'clock. And uh, last but not least, uh, I do want to thank you, Dennis and Liz, uh, for uh, having this enlightening conversation for about the last hour or so. Um, your perspectives and insights are valuable. Um, please, you know, take a second to scan the QR codes we have on the screen here and connect with Dennis and Liz. Uh, so, uh, you know, you can add to your digital Rolodex of, of contacts within the industry. So thanks again, everyone, uh, for joining us. And uh, from all of us at iPipeline and at CoreBridge, we hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care. Thank you, everybody. Everybody. Thank you, Liz. Bye.